168th Contact Tuesday, March 16, 1982, 11.31 p.m. Billy says lately, we must meet again quite frequently, but unfortunately, it is necessary that I rob you of your time. Somehow, it's just odd that every now and then, situations arise again and again, which accumulate upon themselves, allowing old problems to emerge again. Heaven knows, but I just don't understand why people have to fall back again and again into their old ways and suddenly forget all good intentions and progress. However, it probably wasn't good that you expressed praise over the progress, which I already told you before. The earth person is just so, that he immediately decreases all his efforts again as soon as one praises him. Quetzal says we talked about this several times in detail, it's true, and we also know very well that praise shouldn't be expressed because it leads to the inhibition of efforts and to the inhibition of progress. But strangely, the earth person seeks after such praise because he wrongly feels encouraged through this to strive even further. A fact that is completely contrary to nature and that truly brings no success, as we must find doubt again and again. The earth person demands praise for his efforts and his progress, even though all his efforts and progress, etc. are to his personal advantage and use. Paradoxically, he still selfishly wants to be praised for his harvested fruits, which completely contradicts every healthy way of thinking. Now interestingly enough, it arises from this paradox that if praise is given to the earth person, he maneuvers himself into a state of euphoria in which he is of the faith to strive further towards progress. But in truth, he only revels in the outspoken praise for a time, but then, he already stagnates again and develops no further progress. This state lasts for some time, after which the efforts then slowly decline and, eventually, entirely subside all over again. With that, the state of indifference to the entire effort is reached again, which brings no more progress, according to which the old ways also break through again. Differences appear again, falsehoods when compared from person to person, false accusations, unkindness, egoism and all other evils. Billy says with that, we are already on the subject that I wanted to address. Here, this evening I received this letter, which relates to certain things of the house rules and the ordinal rules. However, the same was already said to me twice in the last two days, but I am just so tired of having to mess with these things. This is also the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this, so that you can clarify these things. But it would be best if you read through this letter here. Quetzal says yes, let me I wanted to discuss with you these issues that are described here anyways because during the last few months, they appear on my control elements again and again. At present, it is offered that you once again suggest to the group members that soon they thoroughly call to mind the ordinal rules from Semiaza, which he transmitted to you in 1977 and which we have laboriously prepared for the group members in particular. This, on the one hand, on the other hand, they are other ordinal rules, and if I remember all points correctly, then the ordinal rule of sheet 15, dated September 15, 1981 states that core group members who do not reside in the center have no access to the storage facilities, and neither to the kitchen utensils room nor to the refrigerators. Now, if Ingrid enters these areas or handles the devices there, then she violates the given ordinal rule that clearly regulates this. So it cannot be allowed for Ingrid that she can enter these premises or use them in any way, neither can she use any of the devices there. If she needs a refrigerator, then one is accommodated for this purpose in the threshing floor area, if I remember correctly. Concerning entrance into the remaining rooms, like the private rooms, the bath and toilet rooms, as well as the basement and remaining rooms, etc., it is to be explained that these are regulated by the ordinal rule of sheet 15b, dated September 22, 1981, which means that Ingrid has the right to enter these rooms if she is authorized to do so by the relevant persons who are responsible for this whom in this case are your wife and Eva. 
but as for the basement, this only applies if a task requires that things must be moved into this area or be fetched from there. The same applies to the room with the kitchen utensils. However, the supply room may be entered by Ingrid under no circumstances. If your wife isn't feeling well and, thus, delegates Ingrid to settle some work for her, which requires entering the private rooms or working in the private rooms, then those are issues that only concern your wife Eva, and Ingrid somewhat, as it is clearly regulated by the ordinal rules. Concerning this, all given rules apply to the secondary members and to the passive members and, of course, first and foremost to the core group members, which actually should be clear without any further explanations. Concerning the use of the bath, shower, and toilet facilities, in accordance with the house rules, the conditions are such that these rooms may not be used by outsiders because the earthly laws prohibit this. But these rooms must be accessible to core group members, as it was also clearly determined in the monthly group decisions, because core group members are regarded as close friends of all other core group members living in the center, which also couldn't be any different because the total number of all core group members should be seen as a single large family. Those who are objecting to these issues should, every now and then, try to study the given ordinal rules again and again, after which no more misunderstandings can appear. On the other hand, it should still be mentioned, unfortunately, that with many group members something still prevails which, according to my knowledge, you call an elite group, which leads to the fact that certain core group members are always accepted for a short while or not at all as internal group members, thus, as large family members, whereby they are seen as outcasts from the group and from the family-friendly sense. If everything is finally to function, as it is necessary for the fulfillment of the mission, then the guilty parties finally have to align themselves in the right forms and in accordance with the ordinal rules and must truly pursue a sense of family, brotherly love, and also the necessary studies, as well as learn the truth. For as long as repulsion, personal animosities, and refusals still exist toward other people, for so long will the whole group not be able to connect. However, certain accusations and suspicions, as well as intrigues also belong to these errors, as they have already been underway for some time against your wife, whom I honestly believe tries once again to put her negative concerns on the correct and right paths toward the positive. The fact that secret allegations of theft of clothing and the like are made against her is probably more than just a vile and unwarranted suspicion but rather an extremely irresponsible and group destructive machination. But whether this is indeed so, I could not clearly determine from my control elements. But such bad accusations are really brought against her, along with different other stressful incidents, which let me turn pale with shame when examining the control elements. The ones who are suspicious no matter whether they are right or not, should thoroughly work through their own concerns, after which they would then recognize themselves that their accusations, if they are, perhaps, without a foundation, are inappropriate and psychologically destructive, as well as destructive toward the group and mission, and that their own dissatisfaction, selfishness, dishonesty, as well as their arrogance toward others gives them the occasion to remain silent and to work on themselves most thoroughly and to fix their own existing errors, before they themselves have the nerve to see a possibly existing beam in the eye of their neighbor. It is extremely unfortunate that I must say all this using these harsh words, but the renewed falling back of the group members into their old and destructive machinations and into their own arrogance makes it unavoidable. Slowly, certain group members drift back into an abyss of evil, into which they will inevitably fall if they do not protect themselves very quickly by true love and justice, and this within just a few weeks and months. Still, I don't want to mention the names of the guilty parties, but should things not return to normal within a very short time, then one forces me to point out the individual names, including all those people adhering to the mistakes, according to which I could no longer permit that you cover up certain negative or other relevant issues in our contact reports, even though these concern overall group matters which would have to be made known to all. Still, 
I can be lenient concerning this and can tolerate your arbitrary action, which cannot persist for much longer, nevertheless, if the issues to be complained of do not quickly turn to the positive again. But as for covering up certain things in the contact reports, I must reprimand you, however, because it isn't right. Because this can lead to the fact that with time, the guilty parties simply become of the idea that their errors are no longer brought to the attention of the whole group, which is also why they wouldn't need to continue to try. However, this is an error in reasoning because I will not allow such, according to which I will lay on you, if the matters to be complained of do not repair themselves very quickly, that you must cease from removing certain discussions and from removing the pointing out of errors. Billy says I know that I've been doing something that I really shouldn't, but I thought that in this way, the particular group member would be helped more and would learn something from it. Quetzal says your thoughts relating to this are good, but we learned that such reasoning, though it is logical, drove more toward the negative than toward the positive, as a result of the illogic of the earth people. So I must insist that you distribute the entire contact reports among all the group members again if the matters to be complained of are not quickly corrected. Billy says okay, okay, then it should just be, on the other hand, I know that you are right in your words. But can we now drop this subject? Quetzal says yes, at least for today. Billy says aha, then even more can be expected. I can already tell, it slowly starts to tear at my nerves again. For weeks now, it has so happened again that at virtually every one of our meetings, a stink arises. My nerves have already started to go crazy again, and I fear that my collapse will still come before the year is over. Quetzal says this time, before it goes so far that you suffer nervous damage, which already affects your otherwise quite groggy health very quickly, we will finally break off our mission. This is one of the conditions that the High Council recommended to us in the event that some other time the group members would irresponsibly get involved in the old machinations and put forth no more effort. And as things stand today, everything actually runs slowly towards this again. Billy says then, nevertheless, it would probably be best if we already put an end to everything today. Quetzal says I know that this would have been very appropriate for you and that you only perform your work because you made a promise relating to this, but not because you are still strongly interested in the fulfillment of the mission. That is no longer the case because you have found no way of improving the group members any more than we ourselves have found for a continuance of our own responsibility. Nevertheless, on our side, we still see a possibility that everything will still turn to the good even if it presently seems that we could be mistaken again. Billy says I told you at that time that I will still do my work for so long until you yourselves throw down the pickaxe and just as you promised me, at other times, you don't let it go so far as was always the case before. Quetzal says that is correct. And after all that has happened negatively in the last months and weeks, the measure is already half filled again. Billy says well then this time, I can really hope that I still don't ruin the last remainder of my health. Thus, let's wait still and turn to other things that actually interest me more. This evening, I watched a show on television that mentioned the fact that in about one week, with the recent launch of the space shuttle, a plant experiment is supposed to be made. It is to be tested whether earthly plants adjust or further develop their linen production in weightlessness. Linen, so the scientists say, exists only in plants that grow outside the surface of water, while pure aquatic plants wouldn't have this material which, besides, they presumably call the skeleton of the plant. Now in addition, it would be interesting for us to know whether the non-waterborne plants also develop this carrying substance, linen, in weightlessness or not. I say, carrying substance, because I see things in such a way that this lining carries out a function in the plants such that this substance gives the plants the actual strength for them to be firm entities that can stand up above the water level independently of the sun and, thus, can direct contrary to the light, 
without collapsing into themselves as those pure aquatic plants do if they are removed from their element. Quetzal says your supposition is correct because the line in substance isn't a skeletal material but rather a pure substance of carrying capacity that supplies the actual plant skeleton with that power which strengthens the skeleton so that it is sustainable, as it is also the case with humans and animals. Depending on the type of plant, whether it is an aquatic plant or an air plant, respectively, a pure earth plant, this develops the carrying capacity substance mentioned by you, or else it doesn't develop this because it isn't needed. No pure aquatic plant is in need of the carrying capacity substance because they could not raise themselves without this carrying substance. For this reason, all of their programming is geared towards straining against the light, in order to develop the aforementioned carrying capacity substance even in the so-called weightlessness. Why I say so-called weightlessness is because of the fact that this only seems to exist for the Earth people in their spacecraft because they are not in a position to measure that these missiles also have a small attraction, but this can't be measured yet by the primitive instrumentation of the Earth people. And even if only a very small attraction exists, then plants that are dependent upon the carrying capacity substance actually also develop the necessary carrying capacity substance, and it can happen, then, that the carrying capacity substance diminishes itself, but always only to the extent that is allowed by the attraction. However, the light itself also plays a very important role, which is authoritatively involved in the production of the carrying capacity substance. Artificial light, for example, is able to disadvantage the development of the carrying capacity substance, by what means this is developed more weakly than it is in natural sunlight, which delivers specific saturation materials to those plants as well as the development of pigment, in reference to the colors. On the other hand, it is good to keep in mind that some plants are so-called half-carriers of the carrying capacity substance, which adapt themselves very quickly into a new habitat, which means that some plants adjust or very strongly diminish their production of carrying capacity substance within a few hours if they are placed into an environment where this substance in the plants is no longer needed. Thus, the proposed test cannot apply to all plants in general, for there are too many different types that are also varied in their production of carrying capacity substance. Nevertheless, the rule is that non-aquatic plants of the earth continue their production of carrying capacity substance in large weightlessness, with which your question might actually be answered. Billy says that suffices for me as an explanation. Here, I now have something again, which concerns the large cloud that orbits around the earth and that comes from Io, while the scientists stubbornly continue to believe that it is of earthly volcanic origin. Quetzal says that is nonsense, although, in recent months, over two dozen eruptions have actually occurred throughout all areas, also in Switzerland and in Germany, etc. But all of these would never have possessed the gigantic power to produce this Earth comprehensive cloud. Billy says read the article once, and then tell me what you think of it. Quetzal says thanks this is really all nonsense even the weight measurement doesn't correspond to the truth because the cloud has a total weight of 1.37 million tons. It is also important to note that when analyzing the substance of the cloud, one should pay attention to the fact that certain substances have already been separated by space and by the different protective layers of the earth, according to which some substances that were once in it can no longer be found. On the other hand, according to this article, the Earth scientists correctly suppose that a danger can exist for the Earth in relation to the damage of vegetation and the waters, while the human and animal life forms were forgotten, if the cloud substance itself were to crystallize and then rain to the Earth. However, this would have to be in a concentrated form and without new changes in the cloud matter but this will automatically be subject to new changes if it falls down to the earth, according to which the danger values are then altered and reduced. But the rule with such phenomena is that by the penetration of the sun's rays, such clouds evaporate and are removed upwards. 
the fact that the sunlight is reflected back into space by the sulfuric acid crystals and that long-term climatic changes could appear on the Earth as it is maintained in this article, is pure nonsense, because just the solar radiation itself dissolves such clouds from above and absorbs them, by which the world is preserved from major harm if, nevertheless, these fall down, whereby a renewed chemical change takes place in fractions of a second by what means further greater dangers are avoided again. It is very unfortunate that the earthly scientists repeatedly make such mistakes and misinterpret things, which lead to such headlines in newspapers that unnecessarily spread fear and terror. But in truth, it must be spoken of as an irresponsibility of the scientists, who on the one hand unnecessarily release fear and terror, and on the other hand, play down other very dangerous incidents and circumstances, such as presently in South Africa, where the plague has now spread, resulting in a whole number of victims. Billy says oh no, now also with these. Quetzal says there are still some other countries that remain irresponsibly silent about this by which the danger exists that the earthly World Health Organization receives no knowledge of this and cannot take the necessary measures for containing the dangerous disease, which can very quickly spread to an epidemic through only a little bit of carelessness. However, this danger only exists on a small scale, but it exists anyhow. Billy says such a responsibility is simply found on this planet everywhere. Quetzal says that is correct. But now, let's conclude our conversation because your appearance isn't pleasant. Billy says I know, I still have a fever and a few other things in addition. Quetzal says lie down in bed, and I will go now. Until we meet again. Billy says bye. The End